this stuff builds. Look at that. Seeing is believing. And if you cannot believe this right here, then I can tell you something. You gotta rewind it and see it again. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't end when the video stops. Guys, I'm so thrilled to be back here doing a review for UV primer. Technology is changing every day and it's changing even more so in the auto body field. So what I'm going to do for you guys today is I'm going to show you the world's fastest drying primer. And I think I'm really going to blow some of you away. If you don't know what it is, it's UV primer. It's hot right now. Well, literally not, kind of, sort of. It's UV. We're going to show you the flashlight. We're going to show you two different ways to use it. So uh, let's take you over to the table now and let's get started. Okay, so in this video today, what we're going to be doing is we have a bumper here that's already been... Um, body work and it's in its final stage right before primer and I'm going to give you real experience of taking something that's just been sanded and uh, using the UV light and what situations do I use this light in, what is it good for, when can I use the rattle can, when can I use, the, um, use it out of the gun. But before we do all that, let's talk about the UV light itself. Um, I'm going to go over all of the information on how it was developed. Uh, first, we're going to open up and we're going to take we're going to take a look. It's called the uh, Tommy Gun um, UV light, and this is the PT3. Now, when you get this, it comes in a nice kit. Um, it comes with your battery charger. I've used this a few times before before I did the review, so I can give you guys some good helpful tips. This is a light. This is his newest newest version. He actually used to have it in the uh, Milwaukee. He used to take that flashlight and um, retrofit it but now this is a newer one it's uh, much better so that's the light it comes with uh, two batteries here which are obviously rechargeable okay so those are two batteries um it comes with these very cool stylish glasses that you need to wear uh some gloves and i ordered some so cure which we'll get to in another video Okay, so this is a light, and uh, when you hit the button, you got that purplish light. Now, what I went ahead and did is I reached out to Tommy, and I said, Tommy, give me some information about how the lights develop for all my geeks out there. I want to know how the process of um, drying comes from just a light, because it kind of amazes me. So he got back to me. I'm going to read it real quick for you. He says, um, basically, it's designed to util utilize the LED UV emitter in combination with optical magnification which as a result amplifies the UV radiation emitted to quickly activate the photo inhibitors or initiators packaged within the primer to catalyze the primer into a non-reversible product. Is this too much? I'll keep going. Unlike urethane pr uh, primer, what we commonly always use, which uses a separate catalyst, which would be the hardener, it has to be, which has to be mixed together with the primer. Urethane primer relies on the moisture within the catalyst to begin that molecular cross-linking process of the molecules. UV primer cures the same exact way, but with <laughs> UV primer cures the same exact way with a catalyst, so to speak, that responds to certain frequencies of UV light, of the UV light spectrum. This is why UV primer is always a single component. Until exposed to UV light, then becomes immediately cured. So it will never cure unless it has the sunlight or this light right here. And we can't always guarantee the sun's always gonna be on it. So with that said, what I'm gonna do right now, since we know that this light is super technical, um, we're going to sand this down and then we're going to see how it works. Okay, so before we go to primer, let's just have a quick brief lesson on how we're going to prepare this. So this is um, Polyflex. We use it on bumpers, flexible um, parts. It's great for uh, just a little bit of a fill. Um, obviously, you want to make sure your plastic is good beforehand. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sand this real quick with 120, uh, 180. I'm going to kind of knock it down and for that, 
I'm gonna use, um, and it's an orbital sander, but it's flat. So that's gonna help me knock it down and kind of get it into shape. And for that, like I said, I have 180 grit. So I went ahead and I just put Velcro on this. Uh, it was regularly a sticky, sticky one, but I put Velcro. So I'll go ahead and I'll 180 this. And then I got 220 on here to uh, do it by hand. And then what I'll do is I'll take my 400 and back sand the whole area and preparation for primer. So let me show that to you right now. I'll go ahead and I'll blow it off. I'll apply some guide coat to see where my lows are and my sand scratchers. And now what I'll do is I'll take my 220 and I'll see where my scratches are from my 180. And then I'll actually go over um, this whole thing with my 400, just kind of smooth it out. Then I'll take 400 and I'll back uh, sand the whole area about two to three inches away from my primer area. <laughs> Give it another blow off. And I'll go ahead and I'll use some uh, wax and grease remover just to make sure that I have the best adhesion and everything's cleaned up. Now, when it comes to primer, we have two options and a way to get the primer to the actual panel. And what I love about this stuff is, guys, my do-it-yourselfers, you can use this stuff in your own garage, save some time, because this gives you this, uh, just about the same millage as what this would give you. Now, this is sprayed out of a, um, paint gun you can use a 1.0 it's going to give you a little bit more mills this is going to give you just almost as much when you see the amount of primers coming off when you sand this you're going to be amazed i'm going to tell you that much now a couple things for uv primer it's dinner plate i guess that depends on how hungry you are that means the size of your repair generally should be the size of a dinner plate so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to use this um rattle cam because i know a lot of my guys probably want to use this anyways uh, most of you want to go to the store and get a rattle can I will tell you though that um, the light will set you back a little bit but this light is a fraction of the cost of what the Tesla would be and that's 3,000 okay so something that you need to know about this is you're not going for full coverage this is gonna be a little bit transparent you're not gonna go for full coverage on the first coat if you try to do that um, the light is not gonna be able to penetrate all the way through and dry the primer underneath and it will flake and peel right off very important to know, light coats, you dry them um, after each coat, do about three coats. So this has got a narrow pattern. We're gonna be just really um, casual with it, not too liberal, just get it on there. Now, we're gonna do this in real time, and if you were trying to sell this to me, I wouldn't be buying it just based off that coverage, but hold on, real time, there's a light gonna put my glasses on and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it about three to four inches uh, away from that panel and that's gonna dry you can hold it in spots and then move over or you can just move like this okay so I'm in and around right now 10 seconds okay and this is all gonna be real time no editing for this whole primer session this um, actual light has a bigger footprint so it is able to cover a larger area at one time. Now, I can touch this right now and it's already dry, but you don't care about that because you want the coverage to be there. So stand by, let's do another coat right now. This is your second coat. So there goes your second coat. Now, once again, guys, you kind of have to get away from the fact that it is transparent. That does not mean it is not building. You will see when I go to sand this that it is actually covering very, very well. Now, there's no difference between a rattle and the regular. I mean, maybe a slight difference might cover just a touch better, but for small stuff, the uh, rattle can, it, it's, it, it, it interacts the same way. There's no hardener, there's no difference. Make sure you guys get all your edges. Remember, this is real time. 
with no editing, absolutely no editing. Okay, if I hold it on a spot, it's gonna dry it right away. So we're probably in about a minute. Okay, let's do one more final coat. This is the third and the final coat. Just to keep the video moving along, I am gonna dry this coat and then right after I'm done drying it, I'm gonna hit it up with that 400 grit. So the time right now, oh, the time right now is currently, yeah, and that is my dog, 737. So I say about maybe three minutes before we're ready to prime, we're ready to sand. Okay, so let's take a look at the time. Two minutes. Let's get our sandpaper. I'm coming over here. I am grabbing some of my 400 real quick. And I'm taking my block and let's show you the millage that is gonna come off of this right here. Completely dry. What you gotta do first is kind of break that barrier. Once you get through there, I'm gonna tell you something. This stuff builds. Look at that. Seeing is believing. And if you cannot believe this right here, then I can tell you something. You gotta rewind it and see it again. Five minutes. Okay, so let's further prep this. We are at 7.39 currently. All right guys, so you saw me right there. I was able to sand it now. I did a quick sanding. The current time right here is gonna be 7.42. We started this journey at 7.37 on the last coat of primer. From here, all I gotta do is prep out my areas with maybe six to 800. I'll go ahead and seal this. This is actually not burned through. There is primer over that edge. I'll go ahead and refine my primer just a little bit, but I wanted to show you how quick this stuff is. Can you believe that? We went from body filler to ready to paint in just about 10 minutes, a little bit more time on the rest of the stuff. But guys, I really hope that you really see how this can help you out. So let's talk about some quick tips before we end this video. Okay, so that's gonna conclude my slight, not really review, but tutorial on how to use this UV gun, uh, the Tommy gun. And I gotta tell you, this guy, Tommy, he is, he makes me look stupid. I know you guys like the technical aspect of my videos, but the man is very knowledgeable in the paint field, been a rep for a few companies. Uh, just pleasure to, to talk with the guys. So, and, and he developed this light with his company and you know we've used it. A couple key points you wanna remember with it um, is that you don't wanna overload it. You don't wanna put three or four coats on until it's dark. Uh, it's never gonna go through it. You're gonna say, ah, oh, this primer sucks, it stinks. 99% of the time, it's user error with any, anything that usually goes wrong, okay? They wanna release these products if they didn't work. So you got your gun here, keep it three or four uh, inches away. Remember, dinner plate. You don't wanna do a whole big area with this. It's better just to use your regular old urethane for that. So, you can spray it out of a gun. I hear you get up to seven mils with some of this stuff. Uh, keep this out of the sun because it will dry. I've heard of guys uh, keep it in a lunchbox if they're uh, demoing it and driving around town. You can still use your rattle can, you saw it there, works just as good. 
Guys, I hope you're getting something from these videos. I'm releasing some new merch. I got some new shirts I'm working on. We sold out of the old ones. Got a new design coming up. Very simple. If you like what you're seeing, leave a comment, make a like. I see the likes, I see the comments. I go ahead, I make more videos because I see you guys are interested. So, once again, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.